Good morning, folks. Fun little plasma filament dance over the limb here to start. We've got Earth events and earthquake forecast, top science news, and we're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day staring down the large northern coronal hole system and a bright active region behind it. Tremendous breath to the umbral field brightness near 10 o'clock position. The solar wind is calming back from that previous stream, so the next one from the earth-facing coronal hole will be very easily picked out if it impacts. Geomagnetic conditions are currently quiet. Now, in addition to that coronal hole stream, the incoming active region not only shows the width of the umbral fields, but there are two of them, and a sizably laterally oriented filament over top of a nearby surface plague area around the sunspot. Using Stereo A, we can see just around that side of the sun since it is a few months behind in our orbit. We see the bright points of the active regions and the large filament laying across the brighter surface region ahead of them. Eyes open as they crest into view end of the week. Let's go on to the Gulf. All three models now agree there is going to be a direct hit to Houston in about one day. Eyes open as this one swings in. Also, Korea will be taking their impact from the typhoon around the same time, sneaking up there tomorrow morning. Top quake of the day was a six-pointer that shook some buildings in Costa Rica. No major damage, however. But we're looking ahead right now because with the latest in the solar polar fields, we can look at when the negative peak and negative to positive field reversal occurred and suggest that the curve is set to peak positive around August 30th or the first week of September. This is also when the Earth is most north in the solar system heliocentrically, the end of that first week. And with the sun gearing up, we do have an increased risk of magnitude 7.5 or higher, whereas on a normal day on Earth, those chances are less than 1%. We're now looking at a 50 to 75% chance over that time period. Forecasters at QuakeWatch.net be vigilant in the next two weeks. Up next, a nod to the unintended consequences of weather modification from scientists who evidently don't have their heads screwed on sideways. Another nod to finding some means other than spraying the sky with chemicals. It appears the cacophony of nonsense in astronomy is going to catch up to them. Redshift, spectral observations, radio waves, magnetic fields, Easier to get them a little wrong, covertly, when you don't need them all to answer a single question. When that question arises, you find that what seemed like the only explanation a few weeks ago just now seems utterly unlikely, like everything else they can think of. In the realm of the real, we come to two fantastically enormous Abel clusters. Since they are so close together, I bet veteran observers know what's coming next, the radio bridge. This is in fact the second largest such bridge connecting clusters ever seen, and to add to the magnetic discourse at this channel the last few weeks, remember that radio waves are triggered by electrons caught and accelerated in magnetic fields. The bridge is the electromagnetic highway between the clusters. The cherry on that Sunday comes in the form of a critical breakdown of the galactic structure. So those who have been with us long enough to know our galactic halo battle with the mainstream over what we believe is a lack of a dark matter halo really may enjoy this one here. Scientists are describing one of the longest outbursts ever seen on a recurrent nova star. This is one of those nova that goes boom over and over, likely a rapid repeater, but it just had a year-long tantrum. They also noticed flaring in the wake of the eruption, implying stars do go from coronal glitch out to nova to high flare activity in the aftermath. And last but not least, folks, we've seen two kinds of nova smaller than the micronova we expect from our sun, and now get ready for a third. They call them dusty mass loss events from long period variables. Remember, our sun would be an ultra long period variable. And with the pulses come an expelling of matter. We can actually see it around the star here. And folks, that micronova term is starting to take on a much broader meaning these days. We greatly appreciate your support. If you want to know more about the sun, the micronova, check out the disaster playlist below the video. It's also on our channel page and suspiciousobservers.org. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.